as being two figures standing, or quite a small man. Now, I don't know what, I don't mean the crew. There's nobody over there, is there? No. In the corner. Um, this was um, a small man who looks sort of clerical. Could have been a, a priest or something. Um, I don't get a menacing feeling from him, but there is somebody, there's somebody else with him who seems to be quite malicious. Quite, um... We stop it. Quite, quite malicious. Yeah. And treating this as a sort of um, an experiment for him. What do you mean an experiment? Yeah, so for I him? think he would wait his opportunity and um, do something to, to either frighten us or okay, or to harm us in some way. Do you know this man's name? No, I haven't got his name. Try and communicate with us. The man that means us harm. There you are. Tapping. Use your voice, please, sir. I was thinking was... Sorry, there's a ro sorry, Billy, there's sorry. a rasp being sound now, and we've had that on I think night two. Get that. Yeah, I, I the impression I get from him, um, Charles Stanley would have paid him to do things for I don't know whether it was um, unlawful things. But it, he seems to be a, of a criminal nature, oh. and um, I'm quite, I don't know whether he... Oh, do you feel that? Yeah. Are there any windows in here? Blimey, it's, it's gone cold. Oh, they are. Look, it's open, it's open, it's open. Oh. Hey, that's you. OK. Do you know what I suggest? Do you know what I suggest we do, Carl? What's that? OK, two people stay down here. The rest of us take the main camera and go upstairs and continue investigating. Marvellous. OK. Um, the two people I suggest to stay down here... Oh. Well, your suggestions aren't really suggestions, are yes. they? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 huh? Well, isn't your back stayed out there? Very funny, Stuart. What do you mean, do you want to take the camera? <laughs> yeah, here we go. Chris, there we go. Chris, I'd like you to stay down here on your own. No, you said two people. No, you can stay down here on your own. <laughs> it's punishment for being cheeky, Chris. Yeah. No, no, you said two people. <laughs> no, you on your own. Well, you be. Up and uh, away from here. No, I don't like this. Yeah, give me that cable. Hey, Stuart, it's on you. You all right? Yes, you've got your talk back. Shout. Right. You'll be down Shout here on your own, Chris, OK? You'll have talk back, we'll be able to hear you. OK. Good luck. Chris and I are sticking as a team now. Are you all right? We're looking after each other. Are you all right, Chris? Are you with me then? No, no. no. OK. Yep. Go for it. Chris, don't forget, ask out. You've got your work in there, but yeah. ask yeah. out. Really ask out. And ask for something malevolent to show itself to you. Because I right. think it might to you. OK, come on, let's go up. <coughs> the rest of us will continue <coughs> with the main camera. On, my, my, my we can just on. crawl up this way. Mind your head. Up, yeah, you up? I will do. Good luck, Chris. Thank you. You'll be great. Watch your arm on this right. nail as you come up. Yeah, yeah OK. <laughs> Yeah. You want two, Chris? <laughs> I'm, I'm on two, two. So the team is dividing, and we're going to go back to the vigil as soon as they settled in the new location. I do want to talk, though, to Brian Shepard, our uh, medium clairvoyant here in the studio, because Billy Roberts got the sense of a Charles Stanley from the 17th century. Yeah. You've got somebody a bit earlier coming through. I have. I mean, l let's remember that I've been over to uh, uh, Bidston uh, uh, Lodge anyway. And, of course, you know, like you and everyone else, I've, I've been watching this, uh, this video. What I'm getting through is, 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 is another name. I mean, Stanley, I'm very happy with indeed. That seems to kind of, you know, sit with me very easily. But I've got another name from an earlier period, and it's something like, and it's quite a likely name, really. It's like Ferdinando, OK? Um, you know, a man of good constitution and well-respected man. A man of standing, something like an earl. Okay. But it sounds like you're not absolutely certain that it is Ferdinando. 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 That's what I'm getting. I mean, you know, I slipped around a bit because we're hearing other names, you know, and that kind of throws me off kilter a little bit, obviously, you know, and, and, I, and I'm sure, you know, that, that, that Billy's hit, hit it on the head. And you what's know, around that name? What's happening around that time? What's happening is that I'm, I'm, I'm getting this man coming through and that there's, there's a certain plot against him uh, for some reason. Um, you know, there's a conspiracy, a conspiracy involving, what, involving, you know, getting rid of him. He's in someone's way. He's upset someone. This someone, 
and once again, this thing about the women are creeping in, I believe are witches. It's witchcraft. Somehow they're trying to get, do away with this gentleman through the use of witchcraft. Um, and poison comes into my head. Poison in terms of, and another, and another little phrase, another, uh, true morals. True moral. Okay, morals. well, the people who might be able to make more of that. And thank you for the moment, Brian. Uh, Leslie and Fred Bat. Leslie's with them, Fred Bat, our academic historian and demonologist. So we've already got, um, we've already got Charles Stanley and Dorothy Helene or Helen, possibly of Dutch origin, Leslie. Uh, absolutely bang on. Very excited about it. This is Charles, 8th Earl of Derby, also known as Lord Strange. Not because he was strange, but this had become a family name by marriage uh, with the Stanleys. He married Dorothea Helena de Rupa in 1650. His father had been killed fighting, in fact, in the Civil War for the Crown. Helena de Rupa was described comfortably by her mother-in-law as um, Delilah because of, of her Jezebel. sexual behaviour. Because of her sexual behaviour. So, in fact, that's absolutely bang on. We can move immediately now to Ferdinando. He was the fifth Earl um, and he was actually um, a very powerful and dramatic figure. Isn't that an odd name for an Englishman? Ferdinando. But he was. Uh, so he was Ferdinando again and he was in fact killed at 38 years of age only seven months um, as an Earl. A man of enormous power and in fact in line to the English throne um, and there was certainly some considerable concern about how much power he was wielding. He's from the time of Elizabeth. Okay, so we're getting then the sense of, from Brian, Fred, somebody who's been got out of the way, possibly poison, possibly witches. Does that ring any bells? Well, yeah, but the, the doctors reported that he died of witchcraft. It's actually recorded. Mm -hmm. And there was an old witch, or well, a wise woman, as they called her in the report, sitting in his room uh, while he was dying. And the, the words that uh, Brian mentioned at the end there... Is true that, morals or is, true morals? Yeah, that's, the, that's poison mushrooms. So that's the way he could have been killed. By the witch. Yeah. It is. So we've got one, yes. two, three direct hits and more on the way. Thank you for the moment. Yeah. Fred Bat, okay. Leslie Smith, let's take a break now. When we return, more from the visual at Bidston Lodge right here in the northwest of England. This is Most Haunted Live back after this. Welcome back to Most Haunted Live. The search for evil in the northwest of England continues, and we have based ourselves here in the magnificent surroundings of St George's Hall on Merseyside in Liverpool. Yvette Fielding and the team are not too far away. They're carrying out tonight's vigil in search of night terrors at Bidston Lodge. But right now, it's that time when I extend to one audience member the icy hand of invitation. Turn that hand into a frigid, frozen fist and point the fickle finger of fate at somebody special, somebody joining Yvette and the team tonight, and that somebody, Claire Monaghan from Scunthorpe, is you! Well done, Claire, being whisked away now to tonight's future location by Helen, an enthusiastic amateur Egyptologist with a special interest in the bionic bloodlines of racing camels. Good luck, Claire. We'll get you there safely. After that, you are on your own. It's going to be a great night. The team have divided. Some are in the cellar, some are upstairs in Bidston Lodge. Let's get straight back there now as the search for night terrors continues. Over to Yvette. Thanks very much, Paul. Thank you very much indeed. We've been very quiet, actually, because Chris um, uh, has had a terrible fright down in the cellar. Uh, you might want to watch that footage back. Um, but he was absolutely convinced that something uh, made a crashing sound behind the webcam. Um, so please, Paul, make sure that you look back at that uh, footage. That's very interesting. Uh, we're climbing the stairs now, coming up onto the uh, first floor. We've heard knocking. Um, David's uh, heard it like a heartbeat, similar to last night. Um, as you can see, we're coming up into the top floor, very stony. Um, you can see where the steps here have sort of through time. Many people have stepped up these steps, hundreds of people. It's enormous, this place, isn't it? It's just a labyrinth, isn't it? Yeah, it is. What is this place? Up there? See, I've not been here at all today. What is it? Kath, do you want to come this it's way? It's a big open area. This is a bedroom, isn't it? Oh, it's a bed. 